Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this Monday morning. We all talk about how much fun we have on Monday morning on Panhandle Outdoors. Just get the week started off right. A bunch of good stuff, and we'll get started with our weather. Brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Got a little special coming up on Haney a little bit later. You're going to really enjoy that. But now let's look at the water temperature. It's going to be 64 degrees. It's been that 64, you know, for about, I think, about 19 in our last 20 days. It's been around 64 degrees. One day it just popped up, but uh, we're going to talk later, uh, later on with our guest about uh, what that water temperature is doing. But right now, the high today, the air temperature is going to be 64 and, and low tonight will be uh, 41. So it's going to be cool again, so be prepared for that. Now let's take a look at our tide chart. First, it's Monday. Let's look at a Monday moon phase. We're all talking about every Monday, look at the moon, see what the moon's going to do all week long. And we're in this uh, middle week of, of December right now, and today is December the 16th. And it looks like we're right at a full moon, folks, tonight. So we, uh, tonight, tomorrow night, maybe tomorrow night's going to be more full. I believe tomorrow night will be the full moon. But we're going to uh, gonna start waning and uh, start getting a new moon really around the 1st of uh, January. So that's our December outlook. And uh, now let's take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Their motto is when carrying counts. They're right here on 23rd Street. Good folks over there. We, uh, this week's tides, uh, they look pretty good now. Look at this, uh, hey, really strong tides. We've got a two foot range for the next couple of days. Uh, today's the 16th, like I was saying, we have a low tide at 617 this morning and a high tide at 801 tonight. A great uh, incoming tide all day long. It's gonna be late afternoon high tide, all right? Now, uh, uh, marine forecast, there's a little bit of a breeze coming out of the north and that may vary some, not a lot of, not much wind as we had in the last couple of days. So, Let's take our break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks, and welcome to my young man, Matt Smith. Good morning, Coach. And we're talking about a little bit of history behind it. Uh, we, we're talking about what we're going to talk about. We don't really have a big schedule right here. We just kind of shoot from the hip, don't we? Well, we are. And, but it goes way back now. It goes back to, I guess I met Matt first in, I, what, ninth grader? I think so, freshman grader. at Mosley. And uh, mm -hmm. I, somehow I had locker room duty in the PE class. We would change around and have locker room duty. And uh, so y'all, all the kids weren't getting fights and everything. So old Matt was over there. We started, I was, we sit on the bench and he's going to see when we start talking about fishing. We did, right and, away. I mean, as, and we just hit off like that. And, and for all four years at Mosley, Matt, I think we talked about a lot of outdoor stuff. All, all day, every day. And then uh, even when I wasn't in outdoor ed, if I see you in the gym, we just you know, get a chance to talk. And uh, I think, you know, that yeah. is kind of a good example of where just what outdoors, you know, you yeah. find something in common with anybody. And then your senior year, you took out the way. I did, I did, the whole, whole group. And you know, it's such a, I've told it before, what a good group that particular year. We had you and Justin Leak, uh, uh, the Limitless Kids, uh, yep. Mandy Miller. And we just uh, had a- What a great group. It was, it was cool, it was a great way to finish out the the, yep. uh, the year and, and uh, Mosley. Yep, that, that was good, special times. Good so, memories. And then when we started the show down, we were down on Harrison Avenue doing, doing the show down there. And I, I, Matt was really heavy into bass fishing. And all the time. And we got into, uh, Matt would come on and give us some bass reports and all. So. It was longer ago than I realized. <laughs> it's been, and, it's gone by fast. Yeah, and, uh, but what's funny, when he drove up, I saw that vehicle, I said, that's the same, tell us about your vehicle. Uh, it's a 2003 GMC Yukon, and I've had it for five going on six years now. And uh, like I was telling you, probably the best vehicle I've ever owned. How, how uh, many miles you got on it? 200,000. 200,000 200, and I uh, pull the boat with it and uh, just keep all my equipment in the back and it just works really well. Excellent for traveling and uh, just can't say enough and, and about you, it. And you know, you're talking about you, when you pull your boat out, you got two wheel drive. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But it's, it's perfect. You know, I haven't, haven't had an issue yeah. at all. So but first, was, first two wheel drive vehicle I've ever owned. And the most important thing, though, is paid for. It's paid for. <laughs> it started driving better the day it was. Yeah, they do that. Well, we were talking uh, uh, before the show started about the water temperature. And, you know, I, I, you know, I keep a record of everything. We've been 64, 64 for a long time. And one day last week, it just jumped up, boom. And I thought, you know, maybe the computer read it wrong or something. But well, you mentioned it. It, 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 it did. Um, you know, middle was middle of last week. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, 
I watched one of the forecasts, a national forecast. We had some of the warmest temperatures in the country. We were we were kind of yeah. a hot spot, and I, you know a lot of that's just your surface temp. But it is amazing in that short mm -hmm. amount of time we had a, a warm enough weather that it jumped up. You know five five six degrees at least yeah. on the surface, and uh, you know kind of kind of. You said Justin was out there. Justin was out. He got sixty eight. Uh, yeah. Water temp. Yeah, uh, so that could surface be. Surface temp in the past, and of course, right there at the Gulf. But yeah. that just shows you how quickly it can warm up. And the other thing is, I, I found some fish the other day, some redfish up shallow, and uh, they were they were from the flat back into some backwater where they were was three degrees difference. Really? Just just in the just in a sheltered area, kind of a darker bottom, and uh, I believe that's why a lot of the why those fish were in there, just that it warmed up that much. Yeah. So. Well, you know, that's the thing about, we just never know, we look at all these records and everything, and all of a sudden, you know, there's all of a sudden anom anomaly or something, something going on that we, we don't know. Well, like we always yeah. talk about kind of fishing and observing yeah. the conditions, whatever whatever you're doing in the outdoors for that moment in time, yeah. not so much thinking about, you know, years past, because as we've seen the last couple of years with our winter, it's been very unpredictable. And same same thing that, uh, with, with a big buck or something, sometimes, you know, why not walk out sometimes in the middle of the day? That's you it. know, and, and we have all you know all the scientific research says that they can't do that. No, they will. They will. He got he got big <laughs> by so, doing things you know around yeah. everybody else's schedule. So exactly, and, and same way we used to talk about catching that, that big bass. Big bass. And, and sometimes it's just you know, out of ordinary. Well, and you know all the stories you hear over the years, and generally it's somebody doing something a little different, two o'clock in the morning or middle of the day, or yeah. you know, uh, remember old uh, Billy Waldo used to talk about catching the big bass in the sand hills. And I asked him, I was coming up, and I asked him what was his best advice to catch a big fish. He said, pick the coldest, most miserable, rainy day in the middle of January and go bass fishing. And who thinks of going up, you know, going to the yeah. Sand Hills and going bass That's fishing true. in those conditions? And all of those big bass he had in that shop, most of them were caught during that time frame. Yeah. So, and and another thing, too, he had confidence he was going to do it then, that, too. That's it. He, he, had, a, he had a plan. He stuck to it, and, yeah. uh, and he, knew, he knew what he was doing. We're gonna uh, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about, about some winter fishing, some secrets on how to go winter fishing. All right. All right. Welcome back. Today with Matt Smith. Matt, you and Justin are just started Panama City Inshore Charters. For how long ago? It's been a good thing. Uh, three going on four years. Three or four years ago, and y'all fishing y'all were knee high to grasshopper. I know, but uh, we. Y'all doing well. Doing uh, well. We just I see a lot of pictures. Feel extremely fortunate, and the cool thing is, kind of us coming into the business and and uh, just where where we've gotten to with our with our tourism. Most of our business is you know yeah. tourism related, and uh, just uh, it's been a great been a great situation. And yeah, you, this time of year you do get a little bit of a little bit of downtime. You know, yeah. you've always got got some things you want to do. Uh, hunt and maybe go fish a little bit for yourself yeah. uh, and then it just seems like before you know it once we get to January springs here yeah. and then the, the, the whole um, the whole situation all over again but yeah. it's, been, it's been good it's been really good well speaking of hunting this past weekend uh, Justin was over in Louisiana duck hunting that's it yeah. big big trip annual yeah. annual trip and mm -hmm. I think I think things look really good this year so much of the country is such cold temperatures yeah. I think they're gonna have a Perfect, perfect we really situation. locally we don't have time to get into it we'll talk about it later the duck, duck season here has been excellent it I mean, has some really it, good we, we've had just seems like the timing this yeah. year with the with the cool fronts and uh, i know in in last couple of years we've had some some awfully mild yeah. uh winters but uh, at least the cool weather we're getting this year yeah. does seem to kind of be coming in at the right time all right, let's gear up and talk about uh, winter fishing. You know, we we're in the winter now. We're in the winter. That that was that's the situation. Yeah. Last time we were on, we were on with Bill and yeah. talking about uh, you know getting to that point. Mm -hmm. And and my my take on it is there's always a point where it's you're you're working towards winter, and it all goes back to those water temperatures we were talking mm -hmm. about. And uh, once you hit that certain, I, I like to say mid 60s. Once you get in the mid, the yeah. lower 60s, you get some of that low 60s water temperature. I think everything mm -hmm. kind of settles out and then that's where you think, that's where things get consistent. And then, you know, obviously you want a little bit colder weather, mm -hmm. weather, but uh, that's that's it. We're here now. All right, you have your customers out there. Of course, they want to catch a fish and here it is December. So what, what do y'all try to do with them? Well, it just depends on preference. Now I've got everything from serious fly fishermen that would, you know, prefer to sight fish for redfish uh, to the to the guy that wants to bring his son, and we just want to catch fish and have a good time. And mm -hmm. with with that option, I always go with the speckled trout. Oh, okay. uh, that, that's my, kind of my standard. Um, 
procedure there and then up shallow. And a lot of times this time of year, if you start really early, it's so cold in the morning, your visibility's not as good mm -hmm. uh, to, to fish shallow for the redfish. The activity's not as good in the shallows. You start trout fishing in the morning, get in a creek, get in a bayou, get somewhere where you can get some deeper water uh -huh. and trout fish. And then once the sun gets up, move out on the flats and, uh, and, and stay out there. And you know, something this year I've noticed, I've noticed a lot of trout still on the flats. Really? Not in great numbers, but if you see a trout out there on the flats, he'll be a nice, nice fish. Now we have such a good bay system at West Bay, North Bay, East Bay, and, and of course, you know, all, all St. Andrew Bay is, it goes out into the Gulf. That's it. A bind shell island. I mean, it's, it's tough to, to pick out some top spots, but we it, have some good spots. Well, I was telling somebody the other day, uh, I think a group from uh, Georgia, and they were wanting to know about the bay and telling them about the four different bays. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, well, it seems like a lot of water. It, all four bays combines 169,000 acres. Mm -hmm. So that gives That's you a reference of if any other body of water, you, a lot of these lakes, they'll give you an acreage on it gives you a good gauge of, yeah. of how expansive our base system is. And like you say, it's hard to feel like you can cover all of it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and going back to that, some of my best advice is to get an area and get try to pick an area that's convenient or kind of suits your, your mm -hmm. preference and really try to learn it. And uh, whenever I think I know an area, I say, well, okay, I, I, I have some success here this time of year. I want to figure out how to catch the fish, not only in the spring, but the summer, all through the year. Yeah. And uh, the more you, you try to focus on a general area, not a yeah. little tiny place, but yeah. one yeah. particular area, yeah. one particular bay, I think you're going to have more success than trying to go all over bounce the around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I Absolutely. agree with that, too. And I know we talked about bass fishing with Bobby Smith. He used to keep that log. It was just a phenomenal record of his bass fishing. That's it. Yeah. Well, and a lot of, and, and uh, going back to Bobby, a lot of that, a lot of my uh, intuition into how I approach an area is from those years fishing with Bobby. And you talk about being able to know an area. Bobby's mm -hmm. the kind of guy that can go in a, a slough in the river or a part of a lake, and he knows every single yeah. topographical feature he knows where trees and laydowns are when you're trying to bass fish that's the difference yeah is it not just knowing how to get around but really knowing what's on the bottom now you know you made a big we talked about this before too you made a big switch because you, know, you really did concentrate on bass fishing yeah, as, as a young man and all then but you made a big switch over and there's so many similarities there and you can still do i mean you could probably this uh, coming weekend you could probably go out and go bass fishing sure. and have a great time sure absolutely yeah. it, it, it's it's a it, there's a lot like i said there's a lot of similarities and, and then at the same time there's a lot of differences one of the major advantages was that in this part of the state to uh, be a good bass fisherman, you're gonna, your strength is gonna be in shallow water. Mm -hmm. And so that made the transition much easier mm -hmm. than if you were another part of the country and used to deeper, clearer mm -hmm. type reservoirs. It, it, there, you know, there's some distinct differences that can make, I have a lot of people say, I just can't, you know, bass fishermen, I just can't figure out how to catch those fish consistently in salt water. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, and you know, of course I grew up on the bay fishing too, so yeah. kind of did it all, but uh, there for a while it was uh, all bass all the time. No. Yeah, I, I still uh, I still show that little video. It's not a very long video. That day, that uh, Tuesday night shootout, uh -oh. I went there and, uh, and we had a, almost had a huge boating accident and I, I showed the class as far as, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You got to be prepared. It's a good, it's a really good lesson and I've had close calls over the years and mm -hmm. differences on, on the water, how quickly you find yourself in a situation where Boom. you have no, yeah. no control. So, yeah. And we, you know, we just had a, a boating accident, yeah. I know, over uh, yeah. Chalkahatchee We've talked about that and that's still on investigation. We're going to talk more about it and, and on the morbid side of that, I just, uh, you know, it's one, another one of those examples. I cut that newspaper article out. And our class, we're going to dissect it and see, try to find out what, you know, once we get all the facts in. But. And the, the one, and I'm reading the newspaper article, the one of the factors I see with it compared to something on the road, sometimes a lot of these places we go hunting, fishing, isolated areas, there are no witnesses, no one there to, yeah, to help you. So you've really got to take extra precautions, wear your yeah. life jacket, wear your kill switch. And, uh, and Okay. All right, we're gonna we're gonna talk about winter stage and how we're talking about you know speckled trout you know mm -hmm. when they start staging up mm -hmm. you know when that water gets really cold and all some spots you can go to okay so we're gonna take our final break and we'll come back with a famous fishing forecast too. <sighs> All right, welcome back. So here we're Matt Smith and the uh, captain of Matt Smith and Panama City Inshore Fishing. Always check them out. They got a website and all that. PanamaCityInshore.com. PanamaCityInshore.com. Uh, good folks to go fishing with. But I, 
Like I said, I knew before they were big time fishermen, so I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to have them on. Let's look at our fishing game forecast for today, okay? Part two is by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty, 832-6000. Uh, talking about good fishermen, old Mark is a good fisherman, so sure give him is. a call. He can, uh, if you don't, you don't want to buy a house from him, just talk about fishing. And our times today, 11.08 a.m. to 1.08, right in the middle of the day. Take an extended lunch break. Tell your boss you got a... Got something you got to do. And then tonight, <laughs> 11.32 to 1.32. All right, that takes care of our, our time and all. But while we're looking over here, uh, you know, Stan Kirk was on the show last week, and he brought this picture. And I showed it to Matt, too. It's just, it's just a sickening picture of these fish that were caught with a gill net over here at Crooked Island Sound. They're just thrown out to waste. And it, uh, Stan said it's over 400 pounds of fish. And they're, they're investigating it. And if y'all know anything about it, give the FWC a call. They will, as a reward offered and all, and what a total waste. To total waste, and you know, and I, and I realize that you know it, it's not representative of, of everyone that does that. But uh, what I look at yeah, from yeah. A, from a, as a fishing guide and someone that's you yeah. know been on the water and loved to fish my whole life is every one of those fish there create an opportunity for someone, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a, a child or, or somebody wanting to go out and have yeah. a good time, and uh, that's that's just. Yeah, and so, campus. you know, we just, it's our resources, Matt, mine, That's yours, Bob's, it's all of our resources. It's That's not it. just that one person going there and grab, you know, catch 400 pounds of fish and throw them away mm -hmm. and, to, to make a point or something. So, uh, we, you know, that's kind of riffraff we uh, need to take care of. Absolutely. Yeah. That's when, and you can't say enough good things about the FWC. That's what they're out, out there yeah. for, and, and the okay. area they've got to cover is amazing. Yeah. Just how much. They do a good job. Area. But on a more positive note, let's talk yep. about, you know, we're talking yep. about a speck of trout and all, and I gave an example I've talked about on the show, I'll talk about it again, about one day when they were caught 64. I, I wanted to catch, I was with another guy, I wanted to catch 60, this is before Lemus now, okay, back in the 70s. I wanted to catch 67, one for each county, but we mm -hmm. had to cut it short. But anyway, the next day I took it dad, we didn't catch any. So you've been in that situation where they've been a big wad of them right there, and they just boom, 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 boom. And a lot of, and a lot of that has to do with the weather. Yeah. Uh, with trout fishing, I like the colder the better. Now, you know, everybody has their limit on what they, you know, what they want to go out and, and, uh, and fish in. And if you dress for it, you know, you, it can be comfortable. But uh, the colder the better. But those fish move a lot. And... Uh, that, you and know, that's the key to it is find out where do they move because that next day we went and they we just struck out. That's it. And that's I, it. So I, I learned a valuable lesson way back in the 70s on, on speck of trout. That's it. Well, yeah. and, you know, and that goes back to just kind of the general uh, tactic of trying to cover water until yeah. you get in the area where the fish are. So you just keep you, moving. You keep, keep moving. But, you know, this time of year your fish are looking for stable. Uh, I look for depth but also look for good stability. And, you know, some of these cold fronts that come through, that's why, you know, a lot of the reason the fish move off the flats. Mm -hmm. You've got strong tides and you've got very, some very harsh conditions. When that low tide um, mm -hmm. dumps out and we get a hard north wind, there's not a lot of water uh, in, in most, of these, most of these places. That's yeah. right. And so your fish have moved in uh, everything, creeks, mm -hmm. bios, canals, um, a lot of times even just a, a hole if you, you know, find, find a hole out off the edge of a flat but most of the time it's fish looking for stability and mm -hmm. uh, generally you're going to find numbers and that's one of the, the things that helps me find fish is if I'm out on a say a day I take for myself just to go scout mm -hmm. I don't stay in one place for long if I'm not catching a fish I'm going to keep keep moving yeah but uh, and I, I, it's my number one bait this time of year the, the style of fishing I like to get bites would just be a soft plastic grub. Everybody has their pick on brand and that sort of thing, but quarter ounce jig head yeah. with a... That's with old school. A, with, it's old school, but it, it's tried and true. And, tried and true, and yeah. it, it just best represents, I think, uh, it best represents what the fish are feeding on, small shrimp, crabs, bait fish. You want a small presentation. I had a guy the other day asking about top water opportunities. Sometimes on the warmer days, mm -hmm. uh, your, your trout, uh, your redfish, uh, shallow, you can catch on top water. Uh, trout early in the morning on the, some of the coldest mornings, the top water works yeah, really well. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense that it would do that it on a cold morning. But, but uh, you know, you told me that. We, but they can be yeah. fickle. You know, you yeah. got to know when to put that down. But day in, day out, soft plastic bait, especially your, your scented baits that are so popular now, you're going to catch fish. Yeah. If there's fish there, you're going to catch them and you, slow you, it down. You want it near the bottom. You really Really like that, those scented baits. I do, yeah. I do. They make a make a huge difference. You know, we and we talk all the time about conditions and how important it is to be out there at the right time of day or the tide and all that. Yeah. A lot of times, I think that can bridge the gap if you're when you're when you're out there and mm -hmm. you just make time and you go fishing. That's a lot of times is going to get a bite from a fish that wouldn't bite otherwise just because of that added attraction. So it works. 
Yeah, they what work. about your colors and all? You got light color, dark colors? Mm -hmm. and I like a dark color and I like a natural, kind of a natural hue. This mm -hmm. time of year, our water gets really clear. Mm -hmm. And so you're not needing something that really stands out. I like something that's uh, either a, kind of a, a shrimp color. They yeah. make a lot of different variations of shrimp or a natural bait fish, just a natural color. Mm -hmm. Don't necessarily have to have a lot of flake or sparkle in it, although that doesn't hurt, but uh, just a darker, darker color. All right, and we talked a lot about winter. Before we know, it's going to be spring fishing. It, it won't be long. Now, I know. I've seen you guys out. We've run into each other out there doing this, uh, uh, those famous mackerel in the bay. That's Is that it. fun? Or it's what? fun. It's That's a lot it. of fun. Well, and you know, you go through winter, and you know, things things are just limited on, on what you can do, and you you kind of get into the the same mode, mm -hmm. and you fish particular areas and that's the first situation where you just literally can have acres of fish yeah. actively feeding and everybody kind of gets into everybody's it. Everybody's having a good everybody time. Everybody has a good time. And it's remarkable how well everybody gets along with that many boats it, and all. And I know the last time I saw it, y'all were fly fishing. It really is. We're fly fishing. And, uh, yep. Yeah, yep. so that, that, that's fun at all. Just inside the past. I know we talk about it all the time. We're going to get together at some point and do some filming. We're, on the we're going to do that. We're going to film a show of that. You know. yeah. Best, your favorite way of catching fish, Matt, what would it be? My favorite way, if I could just go fish and, and have fun, would be a top order. Yeah. I think I'd yeah. rather catch five fish on a top order than I had 25 on anything else. But at the same time, I like to catch fish and have a good time. So yeah. I want to do whatever is best to do. Well, do you and Justin have a good time just go by yourself? And very rarely, it yeah. seems, it's time. Sometimes we'll yeah. we'll just kind of jump in the boat the last minute, sometimes take his one of his boys or both of them and uh -huh. just go out for a fun trip. But uh, not as much as we'd like to. Just You just you just kind of got to be, always be ready and, yeah. and uh, get a chance yeah. to do it. But, well, speaking of wrap things up, we're going to wrap it up. But I, as always, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. I always enjoy it, Coach. Yeah, I guess you've been my longest term guest over Have the I? years. Yeah. Was, you were one of the first guys I ever brought on the show. Yeah, Bill calls me a veteran. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bill <laughs> takes it, takes you over. That's why I don't have him on the most. Bill always is grabbing you and Justin. So, but well, we appreciate it, buddy. Oh, thank you, Coach. All right. Always you, a pleasure. Always is. Merry you, Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of y'all, too. Uh, Make sure you get your present to me soon. Oh, don't worry. Do something good with somebody today, folks, and have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.